Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show here on STV. The main talking points on tonight's programme. Referee Craig Thompson apologises to St Johnston manager Tommy Wright. Scotland's representatives in the Europa League will have to play a qualifier as their coefficient drops. And Celtic's financial results show a healthy profit. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin. I'm delighted to say our bootroom guest is the St Mirren goalkeeping coach, Jamie Langfield. We've tried so hard, Ruffy. I mean, easily 42 times to try and get him on. It's been it's been so difficult, but he's here now. Yeah, and he's a busy man now. Uh, obviously, goalkeeping coach as well. And uh, Andy was telling me there he may be in the bench tonight <laughs> again. So. Full card. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jamie, we're delighted you're here with us. And of course, uh, we still think, both of us, I think, and do you share my view on this, Ruffy? I still think St Mirren can get out of their predicament. I think they can get into a playoff place. Uh, I think it's uh, obviously games coming up. You know, it's, it's all about winning games. We thought we were going to get three points at the weekend there, but. Uh, Really need to start winning. Three points is vital every weekend now. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, Jack, you live by your mistakes. You live by your decisions as well. What's the sense within the camp? You know better than anyone. The sense in the camp is we're, we're very confident. Um, we're, we're not downbeat one little bit. It's, there's been in the last few weeks. There's been a lot of turnover of players. I think it was eight or nine going out and and ten coming in. So it's 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 been it's been hard. Uh, and we need to get these boys to gel. It's like a new preseason. We need to get the boys to gel really well. And thankfully we've got a couple of cup games coming up in the next couple of weeks. So hopefully the boys can get together and we've got a better chance going into the league and obviously take some positive results from the cup games as well. Yeah, I mean Air United is is. Obviously on the horizon, and I think you know some of the players might let their minds wander to that. But of course, I think the key issue here, uh, Jamie, is you guys have got Air United and Dumbarton at home, which could be, I think, the defining moment. Yeah, those those games are, are, are going to be massive. But I think I think the way the manager's got it, I think we've got 13 cup finals to end the season. It's, it's as simple as that, and that's the way as players we need to look at it. Um, the the problem is is that the games are running out, um, but it's now getting to stage. There's no point in us getting plaudits for playing well. We need to. I'd rather win and win ugly. I uh, won no. I don't care how it goes in. We need to start picking up the three points. But as a, as a squad, we, we believe we can do it. As the manager and, and James Fowler as well and Alan Manis together, they we work together closely and and we get the boys up for every game at the weekend. And fingers crossed, it, it can start uh, this weekend at East Fife in the Cup. And then we take it into the, the league campaign. Yeah, uh, uh, are the boys resigned? Does the manager mention the fact that it's it's now all about the playoff place because of the 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 the, the gap that the Barton have managed to open up? No, not really. We we, we just uh, it's it's got to a stage now. We, we we are we take each game as it comes. Uh, we just need to go about our, our own business, picking up three points. We could have said it at the weekend there. Looking at Air being away to Hibs, thinking that was a foregone conclusion. It just shows you the championship's not. Air have took four points away at Hibs this year, so it's teams can beat anyone on their day, but it's about us getting on a run now, and we need to go on a, a sustained run to the end of the season to, yeah. to give ourselves some hope. Yeah, I mentioned um, Dumbarton, Ruffy, even Wraith Rovers are, are suddenly yeah. in the mire. Well, every time you play one of these teams, you want to beat them and draw them into the, the pressure that the St Mirren boys are in. And then when you come into the pressure games, it's whatever players react on the day. And they're certainly, St Mirren have certainly got experienced players that should be able to handle that. But as you need to win games, you need to pick up points, you need to even look at the table. And it's the gap, you can see there's progression, they're getting it smaller and smaller. That even helps as well, the players. Yep, OK. We're going to talk to Jamie about his own personal <coughs> um, plan uh, as a goalkeeping coach at St Mirren very shortly. But uh, let's concentrate on some of the news items as well and get your guys' thoughts on it. Uh, Craig Thompson's apologised to Tommy Wright. He said he got it wrong. Um, I, don't <laughs> I, don't th I don't think he needs to convince anybody of that, Ruffy. But uh, I think more importantly, full marks to him for calling him up and saying and explaining the situation. He got the penalty decision wrong. Yeah, uh, I think we discussed discussed it yesterday. He's right, but you're right. You know, it's good if there's a liaison between the referees and the managers because I think the referees, uh, I'll know that it's the managers are hurting at the end of the day because uh, the whole the whole game turned on that decision. But uh, it's good that the, the referees are doing that. It's just that I hope they don't do it too often and then it gets thrown back up in their face all the mistakes that they've made. Yeah, are you in favour of video refereeing, Jamie? Yes, especially. Uh, 
especially you look at the one on Sunday, what, what happened to St Johnston, it's, it's, it's a, a, people may have said Celtic might have went on and won the game, but I think that was, as you've probably said, it's, it was a massive turning point. Uh, St Johnston had, had the win taken out of him by that decision. Um, but feel that you've then got to give Celtic the full cre credit for the way they went about their business after it. But for me personally, there's, you don't want to interfere too much. I wouldn't say everything, but I think in key decisions like that, so I, I would, I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I don't think it's too long before, especially in the top flight. Not that there is as, mm -hmm. as much money at stake, Ruffy, but there's still a, a lot in comparison to what we're dealing with here in Scotland. People's mm -hmm. livelihoods, sometimes it can determine relegation, sometimes it can determine titles. I don't think this had that implication, but uh, John Fleming, the video, the, the referee chief said he'd welcome it as well. Mm. Takes 20 seconds, hit the button, goes back, the referee gets it in his ear, yeah. job done. It's not exactly stopping the game the way it happens in, in rugby. Yeah, we have to say we have been caught out. We are a wee bit behind. I mean, you've touched on the rugby uh, situation. They do it at the cricket as well. Uh, not so much at the tennis as well. They do it very quickly, and if you can get it down to a very you know, tightly decision and, and, and the players accept it and move on because you're right, imagine that game was a relegation game. Imagine that was where St Johnson were going to end up at the end of the season and there's no way back after it. There's no other games to, to sort it out. Yeah, imagine it was a World Cup qualifier. You were denied qualification for the World Cup and then you, you were given, you know, a substantial amount of money just because it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and that couldn't happen, could it really? <laughs> uh, have I touched a nerve there somewhere? Um, over and above that, listen, the next one, did, you know, it requires a Philadelphia lawyer. It's the only way I can su sum it up because uh, hearts have been told there's no chance of overturning the Mallory Martin um, card because uh, it says here the SFA rules state that a claim of mistaken identity may be submitted if an offence has been committed by another player but because there was technically no offence Morton will have to accept the booking mm -hmm. now the fabulous thing is is you've got that look as if no. the lights are on but there's nobody in no but Jamie said that he <laughs> wants to answer that one for me. <laughs> Just I, I, when just, we got to I just think it amazing <laughs> that it's well it's obviously mistaken identity because it's his own player that's brought him down but yeah. because it's not a Hearts player it's it's not mistaken identity I can't, I can't work that out yeah. so I can't believe mm -hmm. the rule is, is that crazy uh, as you say it was a one of those moments you have to double take when you look at it and think well it is mistaken identity it's not a Hearts player that's brought him down so how's it yeah. How does it work? I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> listen, I'll tell you, uh, I, I'm in your camp because I actually agree with you. I, I think somewhere along the line, you know, a video referee could have solved that one as well. But again, mm -hmm. as Jamie pointed out there, Ruffy, it's all about, you know, what decisions do you automatically look to that video referee? It could be, you know, I, I think I remember a couple of people, uh, pundits have been suggesting maybe managers get three challenges similar to tennis. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a number of things that I think over a, over a longer period of time, Ruffy, we're going to have to embrace them, whether we like it or not, for the betterment of the game. Yeah, I think every player we've had on, every manager we've had on, say the most important thing in a, in a game is getting the decisions right and getting the big ones right. I mean, we've saw decisions at cup finals in the last two or three years that have completely yeah. turned the game, you know, and if you can get the big ones right, I'm sure the referees would go along with it because I think we would all like to agree I mean that was a perfect example that the referee's job is so hard they have to make a split decision they're not going to get it right all the time Yeah, I was speaking to a former referee last night and you know it's very easy I think just to throw a blanket and say the standard of refereeing has dropped I think it's it's equally difficult to try and make instantaneous decisions plus of yeah. course you get the TV scrutinising every aspect of it Jamie you know, I mean, even Andrew Dallas is refereeing Rangers Morton. So suddenly it's been highlighted he's, he, yeah. he's refereeing that match because he made a blunder in the previous match. Yeah. These guys have got to be allowed to develop. Yeah, they've got to be. They're, they're, everything as, as players, when you're developing, you get, you get help with your sports scientists, your nutritionists, your fitness coaches, etc., etc. I don't understand why these guys can't get any help in a way that benefits their game. So if, it, if it's helping them, make the right decision, then it's, I'm all for it. Um, I think sometimes they're scrutinised too much. Sometimes it's of their own doing. Um, but I, I would just like, me personally, as, as, a, as a player and a former player, I'd, I'd like that. But I get that camaraderie back with, with officials that I think has been severely lacking in the last couple of years. 
Yeah, absolutely. OK, we're going to hear more from uh, Jamie Langfield after the break. Uh, we'll also discuss Celtic's financial figures, the uh, Europa League and the qualifiers that Scottish clubs are going to face. And we'll talk about uh, a subject which I think um, it'll be interesting to get uh, both our uh, former goalkeepers' thoughts on uh, with uh, one man, Jason Brown, who played for Aberdeen, coming out and talking about depression. And he's getting help from the PFA in England. Uh, so lots to talk Talk about on the programme. Do join us after the break. Ruffy's here with me, Peter Martin, and our bootroom guest is Jamie Langfield. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show. Our bootroom guest tonight is St Mirren goalkeeping coach Jamie Langfield. Um, we are going to talk uh, about your career as well, get some of the, the highs and the lows, Jamie. Um, just before that, um, Celtic's financial results came out uh, yesterday. Um, I suppose when things are going well for you, it always seems to, you know, the, the good news seems to follow on one after the other here. Celtic's financial results, uh, Ruffy, are incredible. I mean, it's almost a 95% uh, increase on last year, um, 62 million in revenue. Yeah, I mean, I think every time the Champions League comes round, the figures get thrown out there, or what you get here, what you get there, and, and Celtic have done particularly well. But I think on the other side of it as well, they've been very well in the signing situation. You know, they've not been throwing two million here, three million here. The buys the, that they've been bringing in have been profitable as well. And even the ones that they have brought in recently will be as well. You know, obviously you get Dumbelli there at, you know, it was at half a million, and reportedly people want to buy him for 30, 40 million. That's yeah. possibly one of the reasons that he's not getting sell on because the profit's there for everybody to see. But he obviously will be, will be sold later on, and that'll just add to the the bundle that's there already. Yeah, I think Liam Henderson's got a really good chance of becoming his agent. He had him at 100 million at the weekend. <laughs> <there. I'm laughs> it's, getting, it's now getting really silly. Um, but nevertheless, um, £18.6 million pounds profit for the first half. They won't make that much in the second half, Jamie, because of the, uh, the the lack of Champions League money. But there's no doubt it's going to be very difficult for people to close the gap. You were at Aberdeen. Yeah. I mean, you would have known the inside the mentality in trying to close that gap. Yeah, it's, it's so hard. <laughs> and you can actually see the way things are going this year, the gap is, and I don't think there's any person that won't say it, the gap is getting wider and wider, uh, and they've obviously got the, the financial backing as well, and it's all, all they're clear to see, so they're doing it on the pitch and off the pitch. So at Aberdeen, it was all about trying to claw them back in. Uh, I think maybe last season was a great chance for Aberdeen to go and do something. It didn't materialise, and... It's, it's still about just trying to keep up there with Celtic, but as you say, the gap is, is getting wider and it's sometimes it can be a bit disheartening. Yeah, you, a lot of your teammates would have been up there. Did, did you sense last season at one point, I thought October was yeah. the key month where they lost a number of games where had they been able yeah. to really do it then, they would have. They had, it was the best chance ever to win that title. Yeah, it was. It was, it was round about that time. They, they came off, I think it was a eight or nine game winning run. And then they went into a little bit of a free fall, and I think that maybe cost them come the end of the season. Um, I think problems as well being back really early. Um, it does come the end of the season. It does affect you a little bit. Um, but I think if there was ever a chance, it, it was last season, and I think um, it was maybe a little regret I, maybe up there. I don't know if Jamie would agree with me. Obviously, we are two goalkeepers, but I thought the turning point was when the goalkeeper went back to Liverpool. Yeah, well, I, I thought he was. Superb. Yeah, he gave, he, he gave a, a calmness and a sureness. It's very similar to what Joe Lewis has done when he's come in this season. And I think the, the chopping and changing of goalkeepers, obviously I was up there, we chopped and changed. And, and you can see, if you've not got like a regular number one, you can see you see what happened at Celtic at the start of the season between Craig and, and Doris. And now you've got Craig who's come in, obviously back up to the standard he's been set at. And Chelsea are looking to buy him. So it just shows you, if you get the goalkeeper right, I think a lot of the other things take care of itself. Yeah, having worked <clears throat> with uh, Ruffy, it's very difficult to try and get uh, inside the mind of a goalkeeper and work <laughs> out what you guys are all about. You're a, you're a rare breed. Yeah. Um, listen, some of your um, highs are yeah. well documented. Your lows are, you know, scoured over with yeah. a with a microscope. Um, Psychologically, how difficult was it for you to deal with it when you when you got the situation where you you'd maybe had an absolute howler and and you think 
how do you how do you respond to that? I, I used to uh, when I first done it, I used to reflect on it. It would take weeks upon weeks, and it would still be hanging there, lingering there. But I think going back five, six years ago, we probably when I, it's a silly thing to say, but when I had the problem with my, my, my brain, that gave me a total different perspective in life. It was like the game had played on Saturday, if I'd made a mistake, it was forgotten about that night. I just went, right, there's no point. And I probably went on to play the best I ever did in my career, uh, just because of my mindset. And I wish I, I don't wish I had <laughs> what happened to me, but I wish I had the mindset that I did then, what I did a few years, uh, when I was younger. And I maybe, I've, maybe I've went on and, and played at a, a, a higher level. Um, I definitely believed in my own ability, but it was just, I think my mindset was totally wrong. Uh, and I, as I say, and a goalkeeper, I think it's, I think 99% of it's up, up in the, the head and when it, when it goes, it's, it's very hard to get back. What was the most painful one that stuck in your mind? Was there someone that, uh, some particular mistake you thought, oh? I, I think after, I think one, one game, it was against Dundee United in the, the, the semi-final. Uh, at, at Tyne Castle and we could beat 4-1, we were 1-0 up and I think I had a mistake for the first and then the second goal as well was a short pass back. I tried to be too cocky and I tried to dink over his leg, cut it out in the back of the net. And then you can just feel it. I think I became a Dundee United legend after that. I think <laughs> yeah, I go back to Dundee United and they, they think I'm brilliant. Uh, the Aberdeen fans won't, won't thank me enough for that. But then I, I reflect on the game, my first game back in the league against Celtic, uh, we could beat 1-0 and I made a complete howler from Chris Commons and I was getting so much abuse but do you know what, I just forgot about it there and then because there was no point dwelling on it, there's nothing I could have done about it, there's more to life than what, what the, those sort of things and it's just all about how you respond and come out the next week and I think after that I went on to I think five or six clean sheets in a row so yeah. it was just changed my mindset that helped. <coughs> I'm glad you said that because um, you know it gives me a little insight into you know your your mentality and how you bounce back from these things because this is Ruffio we document every week on this programme you make a mistake as a goalkeeper you're vilified uh -huh. um, another aspect of it one of your former teammates Jason Brown has come out and he's mentioned the fact that he you know he went through a period in his life where he wanted to kill himself mm -hmm. um, personal life must you know there were issues there, yeah. uh, and then basically stopping playing football. The, you know, the bright lights go out, and suddenly you have to deal with problems that may well magnify themselves even more. Um, you knew Jason. I mean, yeah. did you sense that in his personality? It it it, it was quite a. It, at one point, it could be a bubbly character. The next, he was very anti self, and but we we just thought that was his character. But uh, when me and Jason were at Aberdeen, we, we didn't really have a great. Normally, goalkeepers you have a great bit of rapport with was uh, roughing you know, the goalkeeper but Jason liked to keep himself to himself yeah. and um, I don't know whether he didn't like me but it was never anything bad towards me but I think for him to do what he's done and come out and speak about it is uh, it shows you that he's 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 got a bit of a bot on he wants to speak about it and he wants to help with his his troubles and his demons and it takes a big man to do that and, and I really do think it's it's very admirable of them. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the PFA in England are helping them with the depression, mm -hmm. uh, Ruffy, because quite simply, a lot of players, you know, this image of it being a macho game, mm -hmm. I thought what you said a couple of minutes ago about your own uh, mindset, you know, is tremendous. It puts it in perspective for other goalkeepers who may well not mm -hmm. hear that sort of thing. For him to come out and say, look, I'm, I'm depressed, I need help, mm -hmm. that's the first, and I think, the, the biggest hurdle. Yeah, I'm glad there's there's more and more like present day managers saying the the old school of coming in at half time and bawling and shouting's out the window now. You, you've yeah. got to actually respect people as individuals because obviously I was in the era when it was that threatening attitude that managers took that thought they would make you play better in the second yeah. half by coming in and absolutely slaughtering you in front of your ten teammates. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that the present day managers are now doing that because every individual is different. You know, and I, and I don't think that's what they they thought back then. Yeah. They thought there's some people can handle criticism, there's some people can't, and it's the people who can't that we should be worrying about because that's just one guy. <coughs> there must be lots of people out there in that same situation, so I hope it helps. Yeah, absolutely. Um, getting criticised uh, on this show is part and parcel <laughs> of the game, Ruffy, I have to say. It's exactly a year mm -hmm. uh, to the day, Ruffy, when I put out that tweet 
Game over, 2 nothing to the Hearts. The wake is on for Hibs in the Scottish Cup. <laughs> and, and by the way, all the Hibs fans have been reminding me today, they're all on it, they're yeah. back on my case, yeah, well, I'll, be, I'll be watching in the weekend how you handle that game as the goals come oh, in. There's a boy already <laughs> saying to me, who do you think's going to win this weekend? I'm thinking, no way, Jamie, I'm not yeah, going no, for it. it I'm going to take a leaf out of your book. There's more to life yeah. uh, than uh, predicting football. <laughs> I'm not very good at it. Um, listen, I, I'm delighted did you come into the programme? I think a, a, a tremendous learning curve for a lot of football uh, goalkeepers, especially on your mindset and your experiences. Uh, we wish you well at St Mirren. Um, we still think uh, you guys can definitely get out of the predicament you're in. And, um, you know, hopefully over the next uh, couple of months, we'll get you back on as well yeah. because it would be great to, to get a chat and see how things are developing. Great to have uh, Jamie Langfield uh, on the programme. Join us tomorrow. Michael Tidza, uh, Morton's midfielder, will be joining us. He'll be talking about, of course, the forthcoming cup tie against Rangers when Jim Duffy's men will be hoping they can provide a shock. From uh, Alan Ruff and Jamie Langfield and myself, Peter Martin, do join us tomorrow at 7 if you can. From all of us here, thanks for watching the programme tonight on STV. Good night.